Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for November 27th, 2023. Well, welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a fantastic holiday. Hope everyone is all rested up for another potential wild week in the market. First off, let's take a look at what we've got going on around the world. We had Asian markets down pretty sharply last night. Um, Shanghai um, reporting that their um, real estate, their property um, stocks are plunging. Again, we continue to have that major problem with um, China and their properties over there. Um, Asian markets were down across the board with Nikkei also down pretty substantially as they saw their service inflation spike 2.3%. So they're back on the inflation roller coaster here in Japan. We take a look at European markets. They're down across the board as well this morning. Um, just feeling a little bit of that pressure from Asia, I'm guessing. And then if we look at um, US futures, US futures are also showing a little bit of bearishness this morning, but nothing all that major. Oil prices are also lower this morning. Now remember, we have an OPEC meeting uh, coming up where there is um, the chance that OPEC could cut production due to demand dis um, um, issues out there in the market. So we'll want to keep an eye on that coming up. That could um, certainly turn those oil prices back around to the upside. And then of course we have bonds this morning and they are creeping up just a bit. Um, we've got the two-year bond at 4.95%, 10 years at 4.47%. We still have an amazing inversion here in our bond yields. And so far it hasn't mattered at all to the market. We'll see how long that can continue to be a non-problem here for the market. So what does all this mean? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Monday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Well, let's take a look at these charts and see if we can shake off a little bit of bias and figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. Well, when you look at this um, chart, it is quite obvious that we are in a very parabolic move um, in the Dow. I mean, there's just no way you can look at this and, you know, realizing that we've just essentially gone straight up with very little resting in that chart. Now, that doesn't mean that we have to stop going up, but it does mean that there is some danger here in the market if we do find a little bit of reason for bearishness. Now, what could that be? Well, maybe just a little bit over um, over um, excited here for a while and we need a, a bit more of a rest or consolidation. Um, that could be it. Maybe we'll have some data that comes along that inspires the bears. We'll have to wait and see. But one of the problems that we have is we haven't placed a whole lot of price support in this chart to really protect us if the bears were to really attack. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but if they do, you'll want to be considering that carefully as you plan your trades. Now, that being said, when we look at this chart, there is nothing in here that suggests bearishness at all. As a matter of fact, the bulls are absolutely in control and they show no signs, at least at this point, of really turning south in, in any way, shape or form. So if the bulls can continue that inspiration, you can see I've got this line up here. That was that next resistance and we poked through that just um, ever so slightly and now we're pulling back to try and test that. If the bulls can continue to press forward here in the market, well, we may just break this level and push right on up toward these um, um, highs of the year in the diamonds. Now you wanna keep in mind, 
that's still a long ways away from new highs um, altogether here in the diamonds. But that would be a good target up in here if the bulls can continue to push through. If we find a little bit of resistance here and pull back just a bit, well, if the bears were to get going in here, you can see our support level would be down in here. Now, it's not a strong support. We don't have a lot of price action in here to really suggest that that's going to be a hugely strong support. But there is su sufficient to say, hey, if we start to fall, we should stop right in here. And if we fall through that, perhaps just a little bit lower into here. Getting past that point is where things get pretty dangerous when we start dropping into some big air pockets here in the market. And that could be uh, pretty painful if we were to pull back into there. Let's take a look at our moving averages here real quick. Our uh, short-term moving averages, the 34 exponential, the 20 have come up here through um, our 50 and 200. You'll notice that the 50 and 200 is trying to cross back up. We were just basically flatlined along the 200 there where we had crossed down now crossing back up, just holding in this area. But you will wanna take note at just the extreme extension away from that in that straight up move. So that adds that danger if the bears were to pick up and start moving here in the market. Can't say that they will, but that adds that little bit of level of danger. If we take a look at our SPY, SPY, very similar situation. We moved up here strongly in the chart, um, breaking through this resistance level. I need to slide that up just a little bit um, breaking through this resistance level in the chart and you can see we popped right through there there's a little bit of price resistance right here in the chart okay we popped through and then pulled back right in that area but if the bulls can continue to find that inspiration there's every reason to believe that they could push right up here and attack the uh, highs of the year here in the SPY if they can push on through. If the bears, however, have something to say today and start pushing back just a little bit, and you can see there is that little bit of a pushback going on here in the SPY, then maybe a press back down in here to test this little support area in the chart. If that holds no harm, no foul, we're in good shape. If that were to fail, then I would suggest we could come a little bit lower and test this area, this three-day congestion area here in the chart uh, for support. Once again, we start getting past that and then we run that risk that we could fall into this big open air gap here. And that could end up being a little bit of a uh, a painful sell-off if that were to occur. So remember, think carefully about um, your positions and how long you are in the market. Um, this parabolic move will certainly at some point in time either pull back or have a substantial consolidating move here to um, absorb all of this and allow the charts to uh, the technicals of the charts to catch up. Notice how far stretched away we are from that 50 day moving average. Um, that's a that's quite the parabolic move there in the spy. Let's take a quick look at our QQQ. Now our NASDAQ has been the strongest of the markets already made a new high for the year stretched on up there and left behind a shooting star pattern here last week and just a little bit of a decline back to test price support. Notice we still have a ways to go if there's um, any chart here in the indexes that has that potential of making a new yearly high, it is going to be the NASDAQ with the Magnificent 7 doing uh, the majority of that work. So uh, keeping a close eye on this, you can see this pullback into this support area right in here, we'll wanna watch that carefully. If that holds, no problem. If the bulls find inspiration, well, maybe a retest up into here and then possibly up to attack that shooting star high in uh, the chart if they can follow through. But if the bears were to break this little support area right in here, then I would suspect that we could come back and test these um, the, this area right in here on the QQQ. Now, once again, we have this big air pocket 
um, in here and that possibility that if we were to slip down below there it could be a rather painful pullback here in the market and could happen rather suddenly if the the bears were to really engage in the market not saying they will but we will want to be thinking about that and being a little bit careful here in the market. Technically speaking, um, once again, we're um, very extended away from our 50-day moving average. This stretch in the market is truly remarkable. And um, once again, either a longer term consolidation um, is due here eventually, or some kind of pullback that relieves some of that by pressure. Let's take a look at our IWM. Now IWM continues to be stuck underneath um, some resistance here in the chart. Now the good news is we did get up above this downtrend um, and we're holding above that downtrend. So that's good news. If this is our trend, well you can see that we may still have substantial time that we could rest, consolidate, or even pull back here in IWM. And the reason the Russell is struggling so much here in the market is it's simply because it does not benefit from um, the growth of the Magnificent Seven. And just imagine if the Magnificent Seven actually starts to sell off what that would do to the overall market. It wouldn't affect IWM here, but the other indexes may struggle because it has been so much of the lift to the upside here um, in those indexes. So watch that closely and IWM may have that opportunity if the bulls can follow through to break through this resistance up in here. Maybe we attack this next level of resistance in the chart. If the bears um, decide to become active here and pull back, then I think there is a little bit of price support maybe right in here and certainly a stronger price support somewhere in this range right in here if we were to pull back in the Russell. And holding onto that trend, it shouldn't be a big problem here if we can hold onto that trend um, in IWM. Let's take a look at our um, technicals here on the Russell. You can see back above our 50, we're right now being capped by our 200 day. We're struggling in here. Remember, this is still within that death cross situation. Um, we'll just have to watch this closely. If IWM um, starts to falter, it could be you know the signal that leads us lower. At the same time, we have this inverted head and shoulders pattern and we did break this neckline up here in the chart. So it is certainly possible with a little rest and consolidation here, we can push on through to the upside. Let's take a look at that VIX. Um, our VIX, very, very low here, continuing to break down, uh, breaking through these um, recent lows of the summer, um, acting as if there is absolutely nothing in the world to be concerned about, no fear here in the market, breaking down into 12 and a half handles, which, you know, is really a, a, an area of some pretty extreme complacency. Now, if we look right down in here, there's some uh, price support levels down in here where we could go down here into the 11 handle area. So keep an eye on that. If we continue to see that bullish push, there'd be a reason that we can, and we can continue to drop in here then, um, well, there you go, there's the next level. If the bears were to find some kind of inspiration, um, we could bounce back up in here, but there's, at this point, there just is no fear about the potential recession. There's no fear about what's going on in China. Um, just buy, buy, buy right now. Um, let's take a look at our uh, T21. 22. Now T2122, uh, taking a look at this, you can see that we are very extended here. The T2122 continues to signal that we are in an extreme overbought situation. As a matter of fact, we closed Friday at 97.18, which means we've got a little bit of upside opportunity. Remember T2122 cannot, will never go above 100. It's impossible for it to do that because it's a four week new high, new low ratio. How many stocks making new highs? 
how many stocks making new lows. So that being said, if we can continue to find bullishness in the market, well, there's not a whole lot of space up here for us to go on this indicator. Um, and with the little bit of bearishness that we're seeing this morning, it looks like we might relieve some of that pressure pulling back. So kind of keep in mind, if the bears were to really get active, and I'm not saying that they will, but if they were to, we've got a big downside opportunity that could, could come into the market if they start getting aggressive on you know, any potential data point out there in the market. If we take a look at uh, T2108, the percentage of stocks above their 40 day moving average, we're still looking really good, very bullish. This is the bulls are still in strongly in control here on this. We will want to remember somewhere between this range of 65 to 75 up in here, we're reaching that very frothy area of the market where there's not a whole lot more that we can do to continue to stretch um, to the upside. So one of the things we'll have to start watching in here is for that potential pullback. And if that pullback occurs, then we'll start looking at these support levels. And there are some support levels through here to be watching um, in the chart. So no particular worries here unless they really start breaking those down hard. So looking good, the bulls are still in control and they, um, and in no way, shape or form here at this point, suggests that they're ready to turn down just yet. In T2107, very much the same thing, stretched on through here um, on Friday, pushing on up and you can see we're pushing into this price resistance area of the chart. Um, we continue to show lots and lots of bullishness here. There's no sign yet that the bears are gonna come back in. Um, if it pushes back, we've got a good level of price support in the chart, if that were the case. And remember, this is some of that influence of our biggest index, the Russell, which just isn't performing all that well. So it is still lagging behind here on uh, the percentage of stocks above their 200 day. And that's just simply because we were so oversold in the market and we're struggling in the Russell. Let's take a look at our T2101. Now T2101 had a pretty substantial drop in breadth on um, it, which which really wasn't a surprise uh, you know, just before the holiday yeah we saw breadth decline um and, and that's normal everyone's taken off and traveling and uh things like that and we saw it it hooked just a little bit here on friday trying to move back up that breath trying to come back into play now if we take a look at this chart and trends really aren't all that big deal here in um, T2101, but it is something to pay attention to, um, you know, when we start to make these big potential shifts. And that is that we slipped it back down here to test this area of this breakout in our breadth. So if the bulls can continue to push on through here, then I would look for them to push back up off of this if that breath holds. If we see the bears um, um, engaging heavily here, that breath could actually increase on the bearish side. Remember, T2101 is about how much activity there is to one side or the other. We can continue to go up here in T2101 if the bearish breadth were to increase. If the bullish breadth were to uh, pull back, then of course we can continue to see um, on that bullish side, we're kind of wearing out maybe a little bit, a um, little overextended, we could see that breadth pull back and consolidate and a little resting pattern in the market would occur. So keep an eye on that. We're in pretty good shape here, but there is reason for maybe just a little bit of caution to see if that breadth can continue to hold up this week. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today. Our economic calendar, we've got, well, not a whole lot here today to worry about. But as I pull this over, you can see we've got a couple things moving through the week that we'll want to be paying attention to. First off, today we're going to get new home sales. Keep an eye on that one this morning. And then we've got the Dallas Fed manufacturing. Uh, manufacturing continues to be a problem for us in some of the numbers out there. So watch that close. We've got some bond auctions that will be going off today. And the only reason that would be of interest is we've got bonds creeping up just a little bit this morning. 
if we look into Tuesday, as you can see, we've got Case Shiller home prices, we've got um, um, consumer confidence that will be coming in, some few bond auctions here. We've got uh, mortgage applications on Wednesday as normal. We've got a GDP number coming in here. So we're gonna start getting into some heavier numbers that can move us substantially. International trading goods will be coming in um, on that. Uh, we've got retail and wholesale inventories. We've got a petroleum status, and that'll be important here with the uh, OPEC meeting, um, what they're going to be doing. You can see OPEC meeting over here on Thursday, so keep an eye on that. We've got Mester in here speaking, a beige book. And then in Thursday, normal jobless claims, uh, personal incomes and outlays. This core PCE number, this is the Fed's favorite number. This could be very interesting to be watching with this rally in the market to see if um, that continues to decline or if we are starting to see that um, re-engage on the inflation side just a little bit. So watch that carefully. That'll be probably one of the bigger numbers of the week. Chicago PMI pending home sales, natural gas report on Friday, PMI manufacturing, ISM manufacturing and construction spending uh, to round out the week. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar for today. And our earnings calendar is really really light for today. Um, not much on there to be particularly worried about. In fact, there's really only two notables that I have for today. CRNC, looks like CRNC is popping here this morning um, out of its earnings report, trying to push up here just a little bit and a nice little upside trend coming into play. We've broken the downtrend. I think it's worth keeping an eye on this chart, see if that can poke on through this resistance and start looking better here overall. And last but not least, um, ZS. Um, will be reporting today, keep an eye on that. Obviously very bullish stretching up here in the market, testing some resistance levels in the chart heading into its earnings report. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please do me that favor and click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, if you could do me that favor and also click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment that helps the channel to continue to grow. Thank you so much for everyone who does take the time to do that. I appreciate it. Remember, even an emoji counts as um, engagement with the video. So thank you. I truly, truly appreciate it. And a big shout out to those folks who share these videos out on their social media feed. That also helps an awful lot. And also to the folks who continue to support the channel through the Buy Me a Coffee link just below the title of the video. Thank you so so much everyone I very much appreciate it let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up and remember these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security you've got to do your own due diligence you need to be very very focused on your trading rules and your trading plans because that is extremely important to be a professional trader in the market you have to follow your guidelines and by the way I'm going to be talking a little bit about that on Tuesday I have a um, e-learning event that'll be coming Coming up Tuesday evening, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's free to the public. You're all welcome to come on over. And we're going to talk a little bit about that and maybe helping you kind of plan out how you can improve your trading heading into 2024. Let's take a look at um, these stocks um, setting up. Let's take a look first off here at Alcoa. Alcoa, if the dollar continues to fall, and we've been seeing the dollar weakening up here, if the dollar continues to fall, then we should continue to see anything in the commodity sector of the market, any metals, mining, um, 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 food commodities, um, wheat, corn, things like that, um, oil and gas, we should see all of those things improve 
um, if that continues to happen. And you've been, uh, we've talked about here Alcoa here a few times. I've placed a price alert on this chart and we're just kind of resting and consolidating this move out here toward the trend. If the dollar continues to weaken, I would expect to see that begin to move on higher. So watch that closely. It's going to report on um, 117. So we've got plenty of time on this, but just keep a close eye on Alcoa. And in that same line, when we take a look at copper. Copper's made a really nice move here in FCX. As you can see, moving up nicely here in the chart. We'll want to keep an eye on this as this pulls back into that consolidating move, maybe holding in here on this trend breakout, a little bit of price support. Hold in here and look for that next opportunity for copper to make that move higher. Of course, anytime we look at those, it's a, it's a good idea to uh, take a look at steel. And I've mentioned steel dynamics here a few times. Now, it sold off a little bit on Friday, as you can see, and this is a very parabolic move. It wouldn't be a surprise. This has to rest a little bit more, but you can see this was a big breakout here in um, STLD. If that can hold in this area, Area, then look for that next opportunity that Steel Dynamics could move back to the upside. Um, I would put Cleveland Cliff on that list as well. Cleveland moved up through this downtrend, as you can see, trying to hold it as a price support in here. There's a little bit of price level right through here, so hold in here, and then let's see if that can find that energy to move to the upside if that continues to fall. Um, another place that we have to start looking, or keep looking, I should say, is take a look at some of the big box casinos, those giant casinos out there, Las Vegas Sands. Beautiful little setup here in LVS, being coming up out of this bottom, resting and consolidating out toward the trend. Look for that next opportunity for that to push on through on LVS. And you can look at, you know, some of the others. Um, Penn National in here has just gone straight up. I think this needs more of a rest, more of a consolidation, but worth keeping an eye on. Sh certainly seems very, very strong here in the market. One that has just not performed much is Win Casinos. It's way behind um, that one. You might want to keep off the list, but if we take a look at uh, Caesar's Palace. There's another one of those rising patterns in here uh, trying to push through this resistance level in the chart. And then speaking of um, gambling, you can't can't ignore uh, DraftKings. Um, gambling, online gambling is hot, hot, hot right now, I guess. And uh, DKNG continuing to rip to the upside. Again, very parabolic, probably needs a rest of consolidation, but that gambling sector is really picking up here in the market. Let's go to a whole different sector here. Let's take a look at 3M, some of the old boring companies coming up out of these bottoms. 3M starting to move up here in this nice little upside trend. Now certainly there is a big cons you know, area here of congestion, consolidation. This may have to rest in here for a little bit, but I'm watching that close to see if that can pop on through to the upside. And that being said, we start looking out here like Philip Morris, big old boring company. Um, pushing up through resistance here in the chart. Any rest or pullback would set up an opportunity in 3M. I saw Philip Morris was also making a big strong move to the upside. Now I think this needs more of a rest, more of a consolidation, but watch that carefully if that can um, hold and pull back. Um, then there may be an opportunity there in Philip Morris. You know, one of the areas of the market that has just been absolutely um, pounded down is in the drug maker area here of the market. Um, if you're looking for some stocks coming up out of bottoms, take a look at uh, Johnson & Johnson trying to push up here, here in the chart. Probably needs a little rest or pull back in here, but then there'd be that next opportunity to move on higher here in those. And there's quite a few of these drug sector stocks that are just starting to come up out of that bottom, starting to look like they may be coming back around. Keep a close eye on those 
uh, might be uh, that next big trade for you. Um, Chewy is another coming up here. I really like this resting consolidation in here. It is starting to slip out from underneath this trend in the chart, which is a little bit of a problem, but as long as it continues to consolidate in here, and notice how this area seems to be tightening up. Nice tight consolidation in here. I'll be watching in here on Chewy for that next opportunity to the upside. Keep a close eye on that. Um, let's take a look uh, further on. Let's look at some of the financials. Financials have been ripping to the upside, which is really interesting to me because of all of the banking issues that we have here in the market. The banks have been struggling so much and they're carrying so much debt um, uh, on them. But boy, we're really racing into some of these resistance areas of the chart. I would watch this carefully. Soon we could see a fairly substantial pullback or consolidation in the financials. So watch that carefully for those of you who are trader uh, option traders, something in the realm of a, um, a spread trade or um, even a straight up uh, put for this to pull back just a little bit and consolidate might be something to keep watching for. How about McDonald's? Mickey D's have been running up in a straight line here. As you can see, very parabolic in this move, but very, very strong. And after breaking through this resistance up here, I would look for a little rest or pullback to come in here at any time and maybe even slide past that trend. But you've got to note in here how strongly this thing has moved up, breaking through that downtrend here. Any kind of rest or pullback would set up some opportunities opportunity there in Mickey D's. And I think we need to be taking also a pretty strong look here at Home Depot. As you can see my initial alert right there on the Home Depot moving on up. Trend a, a bit on the extended side may need a little bit more rest and consolidation in there, but Home Depot coming up and you could even look at Lowe's trying to come up in here. Even though their earnings um, didn't pop it higher, uh, honestly, it didn't pop Home Depot higher either, but um, Home Depot continued to move up anyway. So watch this closely as we come back and hold on to this price support in here. There may be some opportunity for Lowe's to move on through to the upside. So I've run this video a little bit long. I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'll uh, see you all right back here bright and early. Tuesday morning. Have an awesome day. Everybody.